This is hollow ground. Unfortunately, there are nearly 19,000 names inscribed on these memorial walls. And none of these law enforcement officers thought it would be their day. Is today your day? Dad, why do you wear the vest and blue uniform? To help keep me safe. And to make sure I come home to you. You have just witnessed what we as officers go through each and every day to ensure our safety. But what this officer failed to do was use one of the most important pieces of equipment available to us, and that's the seatbelt. Year after year, the number one cause of death to law enforcement officers in this country is traffic crashes. Unfortunately, too often, we are not wearing our seatbelt. We have stressed the importance of utilizing all the safety equipment available to us. But why would we fail to use one of the most important pieces of safety equipment available, our seatbelt? The most important thing at the end of the day is that we return home safely to our family. We said He was a great officer and friend from the day I met him until the tragic day he was taken from us. On May 7th, our community lost a fine young police officer. At the same time, a woman lost her fiance. 10 siblings lost their brother. A mother lost her son. And an eight year old girl lost her daddy. I'm Sheriff Doug Gillespie of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. I urge you to make safe driving a priority for your agency before tragedy strikes. The fact is, more law enforcement officers are killed in vehicle related events than from gunfire or assaults. Excessive speed, multitasking while driving, and not wearing seatbelts are killing our fellow police officers and we must make conscious and concerted efforts to reduce these behaviors among our officers on patrol, just as we do of the public we protect. Ensure that your department has policies to protect its own and make sure that these policies are being followed and enforced. We owe it to our men and women in uniform and we owe it to their families. He was driving and I was the passenger. Um, we was driving down the road and I observed the car approaching and 
I looked over at Dennis and I told him, I don't think that car is going to stop. I seen the headlights coming toward the car and the imp I felt the impact of the car and that was it. I was going back to Bloomingdale when I heard one of the Effingham County deputies on the radio screaming for help that they had an officer down. I reached down and grabbed Derek's hand, uh, told Derek that I was there. Derek recognized my voice and then he started telling me that he couldn't get couldn't get Dennis to talk to him. At that point, I didn't find any pulses on Dennis. Derek was seat belted in the car. Dennis was not. The physicians at the hospital indicated that some of my injuries were probably due to the fact that, that Dennis did come over into my compartment and, and strike me during the accident. It was like I was burying a brother. It was extremely difficult to uh, lay him to rest. I was doing probably 140 kilometers an hour in the 80 kilometer an hour zone. I was driving far too fast. I failed to negotiate the curve in the road. We actually struck a culvert and vaulted the car end over end several times, landing on the, uh, finally landing on the wheels. Had we not been wearing our seatbelts, both of us would have been killed for sure. When you look back at that crash, it was completely a preventable crash. You know, we're driven by this desire to catch the bad guy and we tend to take risks that uh, are unnecessary. Well, I was no help to anybody that day. I didn't catch the people that were breaking into that church. In fact, I diverted a lot of resources. The uh, fire department, the paramedics, the people that stopped at the scene to help me, you know, plus the resources at the hospital um, uh, because of a bad decision that I'd made. I was clearly driving too fast to negotiate that curve. And that was a long time before I would admit that. There were a lot of days that I spent what ifing that particular crash and thinking about how things would have been different had I been responsible for the death of my partner that night. We reached speeds anywhere between 100 and 110 miles an hour. When I'm coming up to one of the curves, the uh, rear end uh, gave way, broke loose uh, from the vehicle, and the car ended up flipping end over end several times and uh, on, turning over on its side several times. But I had ended up breaking a couple uh, vertebrae in my back. I broke my left femur in two places, and they were already planning on having to amputate the leg. The reason I'm still alive is because I had my seatbelt on during the crash. And it's just habit, it's muscle memory, it's ingrained. I don't remember putting on the seatbelt, but I put it on uh, before the pursuit started. And I know for a fact that if I didn't have my seatbelt on, I would have been dead, period. Hey, it's Ike Berger, uh, 444, and McClary's involved. He's seriously hurt. Oh, my God. No. Yeah, get, get flight really fast. Yes, I already called him. Please, call him back. McLaren? Uh... McLaren, 8515, he rolled his vehicle. I've got about, I think, five people dead, and Kevin McLaren is seriously hurt, trapped in the vehicle. Okay, I will let you know. We're out here by the test site. By the test site, okay. Yes, please, hurry. As he left the northbound lanes and went into southbound lanes and went head on into oncoming traffic, I apparently swerved to miss that accident and went off uh, the road at 95 miles an hour, end over end, rolling, flipping. Uh, what saved my life what kept me in that vehicle was my seatbelt. HP, you you breaking? Crashed. No medical, 
Yes. Wearing my seatbelt has allowed my life to continue from the 13th to the 14th till this present day to be able to enjoy <clears throat> all of those things that are very important to me and my family. You learn to take your belt off just like you learn to pull your weapon, just like you learn to handcuff. It's something that needs to be practiced. So you create those scenarios in your mind and you practice knowing where that seat belt and the clasp is and taking it off when in its emergency. You know, what more needs to be said? The officers can make all sorts of excuses, but at the end of the day, their excuses. If he had his seatbelt on, he probably could have been here right now with me. On my 16th candle, this goes out to my number one man in my life, who was always there for me. <laughs> it was amazing because I had him there to share it with me, and he was. I danced with him, we had a father and daughter song, and it was really nice. I was in 12th grade, and um, for some reason my mom kept calling me and she's like, are you coming home? I was like, what are you doing home? She's like, coming home, I have to tell you something. As soon as I got there, my mom grasped me into the room, she said, your father's been in an accident, and I was like, I was like, oh my God, you see, he's always confident that he never gets into car accidents. I was like, what hospital is he in? And she was like, he's not in a hospital. And that's just when I broke down. I actually fainted. And all I remember is waking up in a hospital, I'm praying that it was a dream and it wasn't. I mean, I have my good and bad days. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about him. And I wish he was here because there's some things that I would like if he was here for, but fortunately he's not here in person. Every time you get into any type of vehicle, even if you're not driving, even if you're in the back seat, always, you should always put on a seatbelt. Dad, I love you. Everett knew always that he was going to be a police officer. That's all he ever wanted to do. Ever called. I was getting ready to hang up, and I said, all right, thank you, baby. I'll talk to you later. And I said, bye. And he said, Mom. And I said, what? I mean, it was just I was pulling the phone away from my ear, and he said, I love you. And I said, I love you too, baby. And we hung up. And that was the last time I spoke to him. The main factors of the accident were the speed of the vehicle at approximately 106 miles an hour. And due to the fact that Officer Dennis was not wearing a safety belt, he was ejected and landed back in the roadway and was killed as a result of that wreck. Every single day there's a void. I mean, there is just this huge void. Everybody says the same thing, well, life goes on and Time will make this better. That's, that's crap, in my opinion. There's nothing that's ever going to make him losing his life any better, you know? I'll never get to hold his babies. I'll never be a grandmother to his children. But you just don't realize, you don't know when the, the last time is. You don't know when. I just hope that whoever, whatever police officer sees this, knows that the decisions that they make not just affect their own lives, but affect their families and, and everyone around them. I used to have a son that was a police officer. I used to. 
And he was a great police officer. He was a good man, but he's not here anymore. him giving me a kiss goodbye and saying I'll see you tonight and it was just another day um, when my daughters woke up and our day started is when I got the call of you know that he was in an accident and it was pretty pretty severe you know it was very traumatic and knowing that he was gone forever will be a day that will never go away for me he always wore a seatbelt off duty just when he got in that patrol car he just felt that it was easier for him to get to a call and jump out of the car faster rather than getting to a call having to take off the seatbelt. After he died, um, my whole life was completely flipped upside down. And in a matter of two seconds, Brad was killed in, in two seconds. My whole life was just completely different and it's something that I don't ever think that my life will be completely normal and back to the way it was. I mean, it, how can it? We, I lost the, the main thing in my life, you know. Um, being thrown into single parenthood is really rough. Um, raising two small daughters that don't really get where their daddy is, is, is hard. And there are questions on where he is and, and why he can't come back and are we ever going to see him again. They're tough. They're really tough. But I promised Brad in the hospital that every single day I would tell his daughters how much he loved them. And I promised him that I will raise them as if he were here. day has been hard and I keep telling myself that I can't miss him more but every day I wake up and I miss him more and more and my daughters aren't gonna ever know their daddy through their eyes they'll know him through us and his family and his friends but that's not good enough for me you know I I would have loved for him to be here to watch his daughters grow up call Richmond yes please keep our channel one clear and open for one full minute so we can have one minute of silence to honor our canine officer, Brad Moody. The time will start now at 0246. Continuing at now 0247, our minute has passed. Resume traffic as normal. And God bless Brad. As I walked into that room, it was like being in a bad dream and unable to wake up. So I did what any man would do for his partner. I held his hand and I told him to fight. At 1.31 a.m. on October 8th, my brother took his final breath. I wrapped my arms around his shoulder and bicep and I whispered the words, I love you, my friend. police officer. That's the essence of who he was. I accepted the fact that he 
you know, uh, would need to drive fast at times, but I never thought that would end his life, not in a million years, not in a million years. But putting a seatbelt on, such a simple thing, such a simple thing, and it only takes a split second to unbuckle it when you're, when you have to get out and do what you need to do. Um, you know, if I just could have been there to just buckle a seatbelt for him or tell him to slow down a little bit. In a lot of ways, it was just surreal. I had to keep telling myself, this is really real. I am really making funeral arrangements for my 30-year-old son, and this is not how it should be, ever, ever. And um, if I could talk to each and every one of them, I'd say, put your seatbelt on. In honor of my son, put your seatbelt on.